Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at Victory at Sea Atlantic. A few years ago, probably back in, well, a long time ago, in 2018, that is the last time I can remember a Victory at Sea game coming out with Victory at Sea Pacific. But now it is time to take on the Germans and the French in the Atlantic and battle it out for supremacy on the seas. Well, it's been a long time since the previous game came out, and since then there's been a lot of other games we've featured on the channel, that of uh, submarine warfare, both in a simulation sense of four players or more commanding a submarine, or really like a management tycoon type game. Additionally, there's been plenty of games out for aircraft carriers, and also destroyers hunting those very said U-boats as well. But Victory at Sea Atlantic certainly seems to be a much more strategic overview of the battle, and so we will see what they have in store for us. Or is it going to be rough seas? We'll see. All right, enough <laughs> enough puns. That's quite a lot. Welcome aboard. Good to see you all here. Thank you again for subscribing to the channel, hitting that like button, and letting YouTube know you want to see more at Victory at Sea Atlantic, or really World War II games in general, which honestly, I still, no matter what, don't think we get enough of. Let's go ahead and start with our first look at the campaign for this game, which we'll just peruse just for a moment at the uh, Allied campaign, featuring, of course, the United States, uh, also Free France, and Great Britain itself. Although the German campaign right now is locked, not because we haven't completed the first campaign, but because the game is in early access. Coming soon for the Axis campaign, adding a lot of units that they can play through in a fully-fledged campaign. However, it is still possible to play uh, the German scenarios by, or making your own, by using the custom battle editor. There's an easy, medium, and hard mode, though no real telling of what those differences mean, if it's going to be a higher unit count, or maybe more money and resources to start with, or other things like that. Not exactly sure, so we'll get to that in just a moment. But the game, as I mentioned, has custom battles where we can set up battles with the uh, British, the Americans, and uh, Free France versus the Germans and the French, uh, and ships that the Germans have captured and or, of course, using for, I think, Vichy France. I'm not exactly sure how the hell that worked, but uh, at least it's not the Germans alone, so there's a little bit of a variety. And this is a great way to set things up for your own naval battles. Now this game also, and I gotta praise the devs for this, have tutorial videos which are fully like voice acted by AI. So you this just jump in here. Combat screen. Here you can select ships and fleets and move them around in the deployment zone. And they've got a kind of not boring, very easy and simple way to learn the game. These are probably about like two to three minute videos that are really cool to see. So it's really nice that the devs put in all these different videos on like how to start an amphibious assault or how to learn about your objectives or intel uh, at sea. That kind of thing. So really nice that if you're confused about something in the middle of a mission, you can save and jump out and or um, you could just like do that all at the start. There also is a tutorial when you start the campaign. So we'll start with that then as we take our first look at Victory at Sea Atlantic. By the way, let me know what you think of this game and other games that you think are great for World War II naval action specifically. But keep in mind, we'll be covering some other games on the channel, including, I believe, a game called Modern Naval Warfare which is being published by Slytherin, who are also publishing a game called Broken Arrow, which also features a few modern naval ships like the Oliver Hazard Perry and cruise missiles and other things like that. But this is World War II, so without further ado, let's jump in to Victory at Sea Atlantic, the Allied Campaign. Let's go. Mainland Europe has fallen to the relentless advance of the Nazi war machine, and the U-boats of the German Kriegsmarine prowl the Atlantic waters determined to cut the British Isles off from vital North American supply. The naval and air forces of Britain and its allies are on guard to thwart the ambitions of the Kriegsmarine. As Allied convoys brave the treacherous seas, the Navy's task is to ensure their safe passage, carrying the lifeblood of the war effort to Britain. The United States remains officially neutral, but we must continue to fight on in hopes the Americans will be persuaded to join their struggle to the Allied cause. Let this be our finest hour. Cool. All right, uh, familiarize yourself with the basic combat controls. Okay, basic maneuvers. Wow, this is nice that they actually put this into a, a military training film. Oh, supervised by an officer appointed by the general staff in 1940. Look around. 
Ah, okay. Now, um, I wanted to do this in the perspective of somebody who hasn't played this game before. I am familiar with Victory at Sea and have played them before, but it's been so long that, uh, you know, I need a refresher as to what's new between previous games and this one, and also to really feel what they do with the tutorials. I believe that in these games, and this is just my opinion, that the biggest turnoff or the biggest fear for players who especially are new is just things are too complicated and time-consuming, and maybe you're very good at Hearts of Iron or Stellaris and you want to play a game like this, but maybe can't understand the scale of that type of thing and get bored by those tutorials. So hopefully these tutorials are clear and concise and that we can all understand. And uh, also I would like to do more videos on this in the future with the Germans and whatnot. So this is a good opportunity for us all uh, to learn and see what the game has to Zoom offer in and out. every feature. Now we have ourselves what looks to be a destroyer here sailing around. So that's kind of nice. The camera. And I, <laughs> that's kind of interesting that they used a film reel for the tutorial like this, black and white, and you can actually see like grain Speed up the and movement. imperfections on the, um, on the, like on the screen. That's kind of neat. Uh, we also have, and I'm going to take my time here and just drag my feet just to kind of see on my own what they've got uh, for features in the game without the tutorial telling us. And there's probably some things we can learn from that. So we have depth charges here, and we have uh, different mounted guns, torpedoes, and uh, yeah, even... Uh, yeah, more guns for the rear. And then, of course, a lot of tools down here. So, as I had mentioned, this is probably the thing that I am going to struggle with the most, is just trying to remember when to call out these other things like that. Oh, this is the uh, HMS Janus, a J-class destroyer. So, that is uh, kind of confirmed there. Cool. Let's go ahead and hold shift then to uh, zoom refocus real quick. Refocus on the selected ship. We're going to refocus them with space. That's Open what we need to do. Wheel. Open the command wheel. Ooh, we'll that's give simplified. The ship a move order. It will move to the targeted point in the sea. Okay, we're gonna move there. Ah, all right. So she's turning hard to starboard. Give the ship a turn command. It will keep going in the order direction until otherwise commanded. Oh, so we've locked it into a like a starboard circle. Interesting. This will be very fascinating too to see how U-boat hunting will be done in this game, because the ships will be able to use their uh, sonars and different tools, maybe radar even, to detect submarines from afar, and then when they uh, submerge, then there might be ways for the destroyers to hunt them. That'll be really cool. There may be tutorials for that too on the main screen. Let's go ahead and execute that turn then. Or rather, uh, while the ship is moving, you can rudder also amidships. Steer it. Oh, we can all, oh we can steer ourselves. There's manual steering. Fantastic. Tom Hanks Simulator is a go. Speed. Use the throttle. Oh, we have individual command over the ships. I do not recall this from the previous game. That's really neat. Okay, I like that. Basic maneuver training. Click continue when you are ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get some color back in our lives. All right, familiarize yourself with further combat controls. All right, let's go. Also, let's take a look at the world map and just kind of scoot this to the side, or rather, we'll just take a look at it from here. But obviously, we have the uh, British Isles, and we have uh, Britain here with all of these different uh, docks or ports or whatever they may be called, and then, of course, the Germans control all the way down to Spain in the west and north of France, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, all the way through Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and uh, parts of, uh, well, creeping into Poland over there. Uh, this must be taking place, yeah, 1940 then. So after the invasion, that's when the Allied campaign is taking place, as they uh, kind of alluded to. Um, but the German campaign may take place earlier, in maybe 39, or possibly uh, it would be cool, really cool to see maybe if there was anything going on uh, down in the Mediterranean for the war in Spain. I'm not sure if the German Navy was used there, but if there was a mission, it'd be kind of cool to do it just for fun. Okay, let's do some combat then and see how this works. Basic combat! This really feels like Cuphead or something like that, that 2D platformer. <laughs> Sometimes they use the, uh, the music and, and film that looks like this. Zoom in on the mini-map. How do we do that, sir? Oh, okay. You may give orders to ships on the mini-map by using the command wheel. Order your ship to move to the highlighted point. That's helpful. Very nice. So move to the highlighted point. Got it. You can also speed up time. No, oh, no. I need all the time I can get, sir. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I need every second. Uh, this looks cool, though. All right. So the ship really looks. Uh, and by the way, let's zoom in a little bit more. I would like to maybe go into that battle editor and deploy all the ships and just have them like not fight to be able to see all the detail and the accuracy and uh, perhaps the realism of firing and the ship movement and whatnot. Uh, it seems to be really well done, though. I mean, we've got ourselves a, a ship that is uh, certainly creating a nice wake. You uh, see, of course, all the uh, exhaust there coming through the pipes, and all the different ships will probably have their own different uh, 
buoyancy and whatnot and kind of what would you say like uh, animation to them uh, i'm trying to they obviously these are going through a cycle as they're moving through the water i, d I don't think that the game is randomly uh, or rather uh, procedurally or like calculating the, the water surface and creating like uh, bouncing back and forth but i think what's happening is that there's a, a long programmed um you know cycle of how the ship will move up and down and left and right and kind of uh you know list and that'll be kind of interesting to see <clears throat> if that is not the case and uh, also to see larger aircraft carriers and whatnot when they uh, maybe are in a storm and to see if planes can even launch from an aircraft carrier or how rough the seas can be when they actually launch. So pretty good so far, though. I got to say, uh, obviously, when black and white is used in the tutorial, it kind of does take away from the... Uh, you know, ability to see the differences of the ship, but that's just how you get for the tutorial. All right, let's do speed it up then and see if we can get there a little faster. Let the ship move. Select a gun. All right, we'll select that. And then what? Oh, right click. Left click. Any gun? Well, they want us to select the second gun here. The mini map shows the gun's firing arc. Okay. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Awaiting orders. There is a hostile ship nearby. Move the camera close to it. All right, so we may have some Germans then off to our starboard. Oh, that's uh, that that could be a big O ship. Uh, I wonder if this will actually With turn the ship to engage. Fire on the hostile ship. All right, let's go ahead and fire. Oh, they're firing too. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm left clicking. Direct hit. Wow, we're actually hitting them. Nice. So I'm actually firing every reload then. So this is playing out a little bit more like War Thunder. Select all gun turrets. All guns that can fire at the target point will fire. I wonder if there's a way to. Is this, am I giving an individual Select order? Will torpedoes. they repeat that? I think they are. Okay. So they're repeating that order. Change the torpedo spread. This can narrow and widen the firing arc and launch torpedoes at the hostile ship. All right, let's do that. We'll uh, do kind of a wider spread to hit the whole thing. Sink the hostile ship. Oh, there you go. The uh, Z1 Librecht Mass. And there come the torpedoes. That is a long distance. At least it looks like it on camera. Okay, so I'm learning as we give orders, the ship will continuously fire all guns. And um, I don't think we've taken damage ourselves. Oh, we are. We are actually taking hits. But for a tutorial, it's more than likely just to uh, show you how to do things. So, oh, man, imagine hitting a moving target from that distance now with torpedoes. That is going to take a hell of a lot of skill. And uh, even though the ship is quite large, it's, uh, well, it's a destroyer. So it's not the uh, smallest thing, but also quite large, like for, you know, how... <laughs> The margin of error when the ship is moving, I just, that, you're not going to be able to hit that. I mean, even if this were an aircraft carrier, I'd still be impressed from this distance. I feel like a destroyer would have to close to about half this distance here. Let's see what the, tutor uh, the torpedo hits like in the tutorial. Looks like we fired two torpedoes. And those guns have fired off probably like a hundred times in the meantime. Well, these are going to be great hits. Wonderful. The target. Oh, we sunk the target. One thing I noticed here is a lot of conditions popping up above the ship, but it would be nice include a full list to of see. Videos covering topics such as different weapon and ammunition types, launching planes, right. and special orders. Love that. You have completed basic combat training. Click continue when you are ready. Now, one thing I would wish I would have seen here is uh, maybe playable tutorials, too. The videos are good, so that way you can just kind of learn. But then it also would be nice to uh, put that into actual practice by launching tutorial missions that were set up to allow you to launch those planes and whatnot. Also, when we hit this ship, it looked like there were a lot of conditions like uh, rudder jammed, flooding, crippled, whatever else it may have said. But I hope that uh, when a ship is actually damaged, we can continuously refer to what type of damage it's taken. Because if we're fighting, you know, three or four ships, and maybe some of them are the same class, uh, it might be hard to keep straight which one you've hit a few times before if, if it's not really showing damage but all right that's that good stuff wow all right map controls this will be easy move around the atlantic campaign map all right select asw patrol 2 patrol 2 okay 
ASW Patrol 2. Is that anti-submarine warfare? Okay. Open the command wheel and start a patrol. All right. Patrol. To add an extra point to the patrol route, open the command wheel at another point in the ocean and hold the Q orders key. Okay, so first we'll start a patrol there. Left shift. Uh, but click left clicking is not working here. Enemy fleet I spotted. see. Enemy vessels have been spotted. Attack the enemy submersible. Let's view on map. Oh, we're going to go and fight a submarine. Let's go. All right. Finally, some good stuff. All right. They wanted us to uh, hold shift and go this whole way to create multiple points in that patrol. But here, we're going for that submersible, baby. Let's attack. All right. Your target is the last known position of an enemy fleet. Your fleet will head towards the last known position. One submersible. All right, this is going to be cool. Now we're getting into it, boys. And that's another turnoff, I think, for a lot of people, too. If they don't see immediate action, they might not be as interesting or interested or find it as interesting. But clearly, this game throws us right into the combat right away. Even if we um, chose to skip all the tutorial, there still would have been this submarine here, more than likely. Let's engage this enemy submersible. Let's go. You can speed up time as the fleet closes the distance. You got it. Close on the target. We're doing it. Let's go. This is great. Very excited now. See how things end up. It's a lot of hype and excitement. Enemy. Uh, let's see. Two Corvettes versus one submarine. Anti-submersible warfare. They got something for everything. This is the start combat screen. Oh, I see. So we can position our you currently ships. You have two squadrons. Click and drag one ship out of the squadron list. Drag the ship onto the other squadron. This will combine them into a single squadron. This squadron is in a column formation, meaning they will move in single file. Change the formation to a line formation. The fleet will then move into the new formation. There we go. Hold the rotate button to change the facing of the squadron. The last known position of the enemy is shown here. Then we'll head right that way. And now we got corvettes, no longer destroyers. When you are ready, you can click here to start the battle. All right, this makes sense. So there's our basically battle area. And then, of course, a setup area, too. I wonder if we're, if we're near the shore, if we'll actually see shoreline and or hazards Once like that. Once a submerged enemy has been detected, its last known position will be shown on the minimap. Oh, really? Well, we Open better go the there. Open command wheel and order the corvettes to attack the target. Can we even see it? Fire at will. I guess you they're attack moving? As the corvettes close the distance. Mm, I don't see anything here. She could be surfaced. Mm, but I don't see Close it. On the target. Okay, let's go ahead and speed up time then. Going max speed right now. Enemy sighted. Enemy sighted. I don't. I don't see it. She may have submerged. Reduce speed to spot the sub, as loud engines can affect submarine hunting. In the yellow speed band, sonar has a penalty to detecting submerged targets. I see. All right, so we're slowing down then to probably about sub 12 knots. Faster classes of ship have a red speed band. At these speeds, engines are so noisy that sonar is not usable. Mm -hmm. Select a corvette. Zoom all the way in on the mini map. Okay, we're zooming in on the mini map. Select the ship's depth charges. 
Their firing arc shall be shown on the minimap. Oh, really? This submarine is trying to evade you by submerging. Set the depth charge to depth 2. Depth firing 2. Firing arcs for depth charges and hedgehogs are shown on the minimap. Ooh, we get hedgehogs as Once well. Once the target is inside the firing arc, click on the ocean to launch depth charges. Once the target is inside the firing arc. All right, we got to be listening for it then. To know whether or not we're right above it. Moving at about eight knots. I wonder if we can fire at any time and it'll just work. No, it looks like there is a line here. Last known position. So it may have been heading towards us trying to go under, so we might intercept. Now this is where things get real interesting. A lot of patience at play here. So we have the Erebus and the... Kel Kelnuda? Kel Kelandula. Both Corvettes. I'm just going to stay on this course. I'm not hearing any sonar yet. Speed up a little bit in time. Well, let's try to hit her here. Continue attacking with both corvettes until the submarine is destroyed. It looks like they're completing their turn. You have completed well, damn. basic anti-submersible warfare training. Got his ass first try. <laughs> Return to the campaign map when ready. All right, then. Maybe I'm better at this than I thought. A decisive victory. Got him the first try. You can actually kind of see the sub there. Unfortunately, with the black and white and all the interference, hard to see. But all right, our first kill. First kill of the war. And there we go. Yeah, the U-27 sunk. Very good. Uh, further campaign mechanics? Teach me. Tell me what other features the you have. Information critical to the war effort, showing your current supplies, food, and recruits. Recruits are used to crew newly constructed ships and aircraft. This counter shows when more resources will be produced. Click on the objectives icon. What do you mean? Our objective is to win the war. You will see the current objectives that need to be completed. Once the first phase of objectives are completed, new objectives will appear. Okay. Clicking on an objective will trigger a tutorial if appropriate. Click on the Build a Factory objective. Well, this must be pretty easy. Probably just a couple clicks. All right, Build a Factory. Teach me. On the industry panel, click on the factory build button. Okay. We also have farms, power stations. That's actually interesting. We also have laboratories, intelligence stations, radar, AA emplacements, airfields, and shipboards. Now, that's kind of cool. We could build defenses that way. So we might be able to, uh, you know, fight the Battle of Britain a little bit too. And, um, you know, build AA emplacements and radar stations all along southern uh, Britain. And then also uh, maybe even send out maybe planes that eventually could possibly become part of our... I, I, I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but it would be cool if we were able to fight in that battle and get some veteran pilots from that to then come with us into the sea. Click a slot to start constructing a factory. Also very interesting that we have power stations too that need to supply those factories with power. All right, uh, that'll take three supplies a day. 
and Portsmouth. So that is uh, three daily power gener or yeah, generated three, total used two. Looks like we also have a factory there in our port too. Build a farm and commission a ship. Build a farm. Anywhere, I suppose. Uh, maybe near the shore because that would be less of a target to destroy. Oh, it does actually take power for that too. Or maybe that's the total that's uh, being consumed by this district or region. Which is indicated by this line here. So each region, probably named after the largest city in that region, that will kind of uh, control that. Wow, power grid to draw? Power oh. to run all the structures in this region. Yeah, we're going to build another power plant. No way. I'm like playing City Skylines now. On the industry panel, click on a power icon to shut a structure's power off. Okay. Once more power is available, the structure will turn back on. Click a slot to start constructing an additional power station. Yeah, I'm going to build that up here. Boom. Locked in. Okay. Build a farm is complete too. Check our other goals. Commission a ship is next. All right. Those are maybe possibly building. Click on the shipyard yeah, they icon. Are. All right. Shipyards. Select a shipyard. Try to get rid of this. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, going to Belfast to what else we got? Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah. It looks like we've got, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight ports. And we may possibly get more that we could build over time, perhaps. We'll see. Okay. So Belfast, we're going to build a ship there. Open the shipyard window. Shipyard window at the bottom. Oh! Click on a ship class to see its details, including its cost and time to commission. So these are all ships that are available in 1940, or ones that possibly we can research that would take time to build. So we have cargo ships, battleships. We have landing ships like cruisers, more battleships, battle cruisers. I like the fact that we actually can build cargo ships too, because that'll be very important to win the war. Uh, and also to have Liberty ships and whatnot come over from the U.S. and uh, maybe Canada, too, and uh, actually support those convoys. And fighting against the Wolf Pack will be interesting. Uh, let's do, I guess, that one, like Cruiser. If you can afford the ship, click Commission. Uh, I guess I can. Well, if we're going to go with that, give me something big, then. Give me the big boy. Uh, let's see, King George V, Group 3, oh, there's air, oh, this one comes with aircraft as well? Hmm. For reconnaissance, more than likely. Let's build a battle cruiser, the Hood, I'm sure that'll end up fine. That totally won't get sunk in a famous battle at all. Let's go. Only 71 days to build that? Multiple ships to be commissioned. Higher level shipyards are able to commission multiple ships simultaneously. Mm. Close the shipyard panel. I'll build that in a destroyer. Build an intelligence station and a laboratory. Now let's look around a little bit. As I mentioned in the wolf pack, I just want to see how far to the Americas we can actually see. And wow, look at that. We can go all the way to Canada. Oh, so Canada is officially in the game. Um, you know, it's still a British... Um, I don't know what you'd call it, a colony or whatnot, not colony. There's probably a better word for that, but uh, definitely a, a partner, at least, in the war. And then we have, of course, some states for the United States. Are these? Oh, they're, they're separated by, uh, somewhat separated by state. We have Massachusetts here, but then uh, New York, Vagley, Maryland, and Virginia. And then all of Canada, power six out of six. So this might be a region that we have control over building. So yes, in Canada, we're actually building power uh, plants and also could possibly build ships here too eventually if, if there's a way to unlock more of these slots. But in the United States, uh, oh, it looks like we can do the same. Okay, apparently Toronto's down here, bud, in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, same with Montreal. Now, I'm assuming what they've done here is probably because Montreal 
and Toronto are so close to uh, Massachusetts that you know Canada and or and or Britain were asking permission to possibly ship things from Boston or New York or whatnot and uh, allowing them to do so. You know we had the Lend Lease Act and other things. So I'm I'm sure there's probably ways that they can bend the rules that the developers made creative game choices that might not have been historically accurate but to make it a more fun experience let's build those two things they wanted then what were they a laboratory and an intelligence station so let's build the lab the lab up here in uh this london apparently a place called london small town probably let's build that here the lab and Let's also build an intelligence station. I don't want to overload that with power. Oh, well, we are building another power station here, so let's grab that too. There'll be more stuff available shortly. So those two are done. Merge two fleets. Select Force 2. Okay. Order Force 2 to merge with Force 1. Uh. Okay. Like this. Ah, oh, that button, yes. Allow the two fleets to merge. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So when fleets merge, they actually do that in real time. They have to go to the other fleet and actually become like um, a merged fleet in the ocean, which is kind of cool. Then you can have them rendezvous the rather than having to go back to a port. Button. Oh, we can rename it. Choose a name for this fleet. Uh, let's see. German Cheek Clapper. Lol. Ah, yes, a famous, very famous British fleet. British German cheek clapper Lol has been placed under your command off the coast of Portsmouth. All right. The future of this war now depends on you. Oh, it's over then. Germans won. It is your responsibility to build up our naval strength, send forth fleets to defend the British Isles, and lay down the foundations for an Allied victory on the Western Front. Hell yeah, brother. We can do that. Get her done. Manufacture supplies in preparation for our eventual push back into Europe. Grow food to feed our growing armed forces. Enlist crew and troops to fight for their country. Expand the Allied fleets. Construct enough aircraft to claim air superiority. Yeah, there we go. Now that's interesting. We actually have control of aircraft to have air superiority. That goes a little beyond what I was expecting with just naval fleets. But also this goes beyond what I was thinking too with the... Um, British Force 300, okay, yeah, good. Oh, we're getting command of things. British Patrol, okay. Uh, let me pause time, too. So we're getting command of all these uh, ships here. Okay, we've paused everything, perfect. Right, I just wanted to look around the map here to see what else we can do. So, yeah, the main goal then is to, not only, that that's actually quite nice. That is not just simply a naval warfare simulator, but also the war as a whole, building power stations, building uh, ports, or bu building them up with extra things like defenses and radars and whatnot, and then tracking down the Germans and bringing the fight to them, and then eventually probably doing things like maybe landing on D-Day and providing naval support for that operation. But for now, with 1940, the biggest uh, goal will try to be to get things from Canada and sneaking pack, uh, past those wolf packs, and then also eventually helping the Americans do the same, and then eventually trying to hit targets like in and around Norway, and possibly, uh, I, I, well, of course, this doesn't actually follow history because we're doing it ourselves, so, uh, you know, we could try to, you know, once the hood and other ships are sunk, we could track down, uh, like, let's say, the Bismarck up in Norway and um, do some other things with um, tracking down other um, famous ships as well. Was the Tirpitz one as well? Were those sister ships, the... Um, the Tirpitz in the in the Bismarck? I, I don't know. Not sister ships, but like two very iconic ones. Oh, I also like how we can trace a pathway, and it'll show you the distance here, how long it'll take to get somewhere. That's cool. If you click on a ship, it'll actually automatically course through the most navigable waters, and it'll show you how long it'll take to get, for example, to the Baltic Sea. If you wanted to go bother Estonia, for example. I'll leave Estonia alone. They've got the Soviets. Big problem already. Hmm, that's interesting. It actually shows the Soviets, too. And Leningrad. So I'm wondering, well, this is probably set up for the German campaign. So the Germans eventually might be able to uh, use naval forces to lay siege to Leningrad too and or drop troops around this area and uh, basically send them straight from Germany and areas around to, uh, you know, into the into the 
Soviet territories. Fascinating. Very cool. All right, well, that is all the time we have today for this game, but I do want to see a lot more of it and uh, play out some more battles. Of course, I just wanted to take a first look and see what it had to offer, and I am thoroughly impressed with the, um, you know, I'm like surprised and delighted to see the fact that we can build up nations and defend them, and it'll be interesting to see what will be in store for the Germans, too, and or if there's an American campaign as well, possibly building up a fleet, too, and having these, um, you know, fictional scenarios or alternative reality where maybe the Germans try to invade uh, Canada and whatnot. And uh, I don't know, that'd be pretty fascinating. Anyway, thank you very much for subscribing. This game seems to got, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, wind in its sails, right? But <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Is it is it in uh, hot water, rough seas? I, I don't know. But I think further development and more features will be great, as always. And it'll be great to see you in our next video. Thanks again for subbing. Thanks for leaving a like. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone.